Brown has a final second. That's it, it's over. The Celtics are heading back to the NBA Finals. What is going on, you guys? Alex Chasen back here with a brand new video. Hopefully having a great day, afternoon, or night. Wherever you guys are in this world, and the Boston Celtics are Eastern Conference champions sweeping the Indiana Pacers. Woo, let's just get a little... Throw that over there because we got a video to make. But yes, the Boston Celtics are Eastern Conference champions. And what a series this was for the Boston Celtics. Realistically, the Indiana Pacers could be up 3-1 to one right now. This could be a completely different series. If the Indiana Pacers could close a game, and I don't even think the Halliburton getting injured thing really affected it because they were down in the past two games and they couldn't close it. Boston came back in both of them. So shout out the Boston Celtics for getting to their second finals in the past three seasons. But now you got to go win one. The games are over. You're either playing the Mavericks or the Mavericks because it's probably not going to be Minnesota. So you're playing the Mavericks and they're the real deal. They have been torching the Minnesota Timberwolves. Obviously, close games over there as well, but their defense, their offense has been at a top echelon, and they're also playing another top echelon team. So if you're the Boston Celtics, you've got to get right to preparing for that series today. You had your fun last night, but it's time to get down and start studying Luka Doncic, Kyrie Irving, Lively, and Daniel Gafford, because those four guys have been torching a fantastic defense in the Minnesota Timberwolves, and if things don't change, they're going to start torching the Boston Celtics, especially if there's no Kristaps Porzingis. But there's 10 days until the finals, or maybe 9 today. Maybe it was 10 last night. Either way, over a week until the finals. So plenty of time to get healthy and prepared for most likely the Dallas Mavericks. But let's talk about this series, and let's talk about last night's game. I want to start things off by giving my props to the Indiana Pacers. Because right now, this series could be 3-1 to one in the Pacers' favor. If Boston didn't hit some shots to give them the lead in these games, if the Pacers could close out games, this could be a completely different series. If Tyrese Halliburton didn't get hurt, which I don't think that had too much of an effect in because obviously the Pacers kept up with the Celtics in these past two games where he was out completely. But I think it's mostly to the fact that if some of these huge shots that Jalen Brown shot in game one, if he didn't hit that, Pacers would have been up one nothing in that series. Second game, Celtics won easily, handily. But other than that, these past two games, the Pacers had a lead in. One of them being an 18-point lead. Celtics came back in that one. Last night, I forget exactly how much the Pacers were up by, but they were up by you know at least five or six points going into the back end of this game. So it could easily be a different story right now. I could be talking about how the same old Celtics can't close games or they can't come back in games or it's a new problem this year. I could be making a different video right now. But the key is for the Boston Celtics, this is a new team. And there's been talk all playoffs long about this is an easy road to the finals. Now, I'm not going to sit here and lie and say, oh, these teams were extremely hard. You know, Heat without Jimmy, ugh, that was still hard. Or the Cavs without mostly Donovan Mitchell and completely without Jared, Jared Allen. Yes, that was still hard. Or this series with half of it being without Tyrese Halliburton. I'm not going to sit here and just deny the fact that those guys were out. But what people do not understand, and as someone who is a NBA lover, but also a Celtics fan, I watch this team like a Hawkeye. I'm constantly in it, understanding it, figuring out what's going on with the Boston Celtics. More than any other team in the NBA. And I love all 30 teams. I love this game. I'm constantly talking about it. I'm constantly trying to learn more about it. But of course, my favorite team is the Celtics. So I know a little bit more about them specifically. And I'm going to say this. Last year, the Boston Celtics, this would be a 3-1 series lead for the Indiana Pacers to the exact facts that I was just talking about. The Celtics, if they were down in games, they couldn't really figure out how to come back in them. If they were up in games, they sure could never really close them too well. Going to the fact why they were down 3 to nothing against the Miami Heat. Or going to the fact why they went through seven games with the Philadelphia 76ers. That's because of that. I love Marcus Smart. I mean, we could just look at we could just look at this right here. One year ago yesterday, when Derek White hit that tip back in to push a game seven against the Miami Heat, who was the one that took that shot with a couple seconds left? It wasn't Jason Tatum. It wasn't Jalen Brown. It was Marcus Smart. He took that shot. He was taking away shots from the two guys who should be taking those shots, Tatum and Brown or Derek White, because of course he's a clutch player, or now Drew Holiday. 
or if Kristaps Porzingis was out there, it'd be Kristaps Porzingis. I'd trust him as well. But that was not what Marcus Smart was. But Marcus Smart forced a lot of shots up, and that is part of the reason, not all the reason, but it is part of the reason why we did not succeed the way we wanted to last year and in the years past. Again, I'm not putting... I'm not even putting half the blame on Marcus Smart. I'm just putting a little bit on it because he was a huge contributor to the teams over the last eight years. But now he's gone. And it's forced, Jalen Brown was talking about this last night in postgame, it's forced Jalen Brown to become a better leader. You see it, slapping Tatum on the chest. You're good, man. Just talking to the teammates on those mic'd up sessions with TNT and or ESPN throughout the playoffs. Jalen Brown has stepped up as a leader. Tatum, I'm still waiting for a little bit. He's still a little too passive for my liking, but he's definitely stepped up a bit. But now it doesn't have to rely on someone like Al Horford or Marcus Smart, who's obviously out of the picture. Jalen Brown has stepped up to become a true leader. And I think all of that, plus getting Kristaps Porzingis, getting Drew Holiday, who is a way better Marcus Smart on offense. Of course, defensively, they're pretty comparable. But on top of that, Drew Holiday made one of the best plays in these playoffs. Getting that steal on Andrew Nemhart to close out, I believe that was game, that was in Boston, I believe. No, it was either game two or game three to close it out. That big steal, pretty much end of the game there. He got fouled. Big steal for Drew Holiday. I'm forgetting if it was game two or game three, but it was one of those two games. Marcus Smart could do those things, but on the other end, he was taking away shots from Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. Drew Holiday doesn't do that. He waits for his opportunity, and he succeeds in many of those. So the makeup of this team is different. So yes, the road, I've kind of gone the long way around it, but it, it needed to be talked about because it's been pissing me off saying it's an easy road. Yes, we've got an easier path, but the Celtics were also the number one seed. They earned that number one seed and people were acting like this team didn't win 60 plus games. It had 20 plus loss, 20, under 20 losses, excuse me. People were acting like we had 40 wins and all of a sudden like, oh, it's an easy path. We dominated the regular season. So, of course, we're going to dominate the playoffs. Whether Jimmy Butler was there or not, whether Donovan Mitchell or Jared Allen was there or not, whether Tyrese Halliburton was there or not, we were going to dominate either way. I just, I do not understand that. So, that is my little bit of pissed offness I have for the media right now, is they're acting like it was an easy road because all these guys were hurt. That helps. I'm not going to deny that. But if this was last year's Boston Celtics team, they were going to go to six or seven games with the Heat. They were going to go to six or seven games with the Cavs. And they were going to go to six or seven games without the Pacers, no matter who was hurt or not. No matter who was hurt or not. And I fully believe that because the mindset and the makeup of last year's roster was not what it is now. It's a completely different team with new identities and also changed identities. So that's a key, key factor to remember. Thank you for coming to my Boston Celtics TED Talk, but now let's shift back to this series, but specifically MVP Jalen Brown. I was so happy to see Jalen Brown get some recognition. He didn't make an all-NBA team, and I wasn't extremely pissed off about it, because if you look at the guys who made it above him, there's obviously arguments for them not to be there. The only reason why I was kind of pissed is because back years ago when the Warriors were destroying the league. They had Curry, they had Clay, they had Dre, they had KD, all make NBA teams. Or really any great team in history, it's not just one guy who makes an all NBA team. But it was just one guy for the Boston Celtics, Jason Tatum. I'm not talking about the defensive teams. I know White and Holiday made those. But for all NBA, when you're the best team in the league and easily the best team in the league, they had the first seed wrapped up with like a month left in the season. And you just get one guy kind of disrespectful but so I'm so happy to see Jalen Brown get his conference finals Larry Bird MVP because it was so well deserved of course Jason Tatum had his moments his overall play was amazing with his passing his rebounds his scoring driving to the rack when he finally realized Ben Shepard Andrew Nimhard, Tyrese Halliburton Aaron Neesmith could not guard him driving to the rack I don't know why I don't know why it takes him so long to figure that out he tries to embody Kobe Bryant that he forgets he's 6'10 and 200 and something odd pounds of a lot of muscle, but yet he tries to chuck up threes. Point being, Jason Tatum didn't have his best series. He really hasn't had the greatest playoffs. Of course, he's had his great moments because it's Jason Tatum, but overall, Jalen Brown has been the much better player in this series, and I'm happy he got the recognition for that. 
it's very, very easily set. He had that 40-point game in game one, hit that clutch shot to send it to overtime, can jump now to this game. He had that huge block in the back end of this game, blocking Andrew Nimhard. And pe what people may not even talk about is in the final moments here with 48 seconds left, when Derek White hit that three to win the game for the Boston Celtics ultimately, Jalen Brown didn't just continue driving to the rack. He kind of got by Miles Turner. He kind of has TJ McConnell. With, it was kind of a weird mix of Miles Turner, TJ McConnell, and Aaron Neesmith. He decides to pass up the ball. He doesn't force a shot like someone like Tatum might. He passes it out, gets another assist, gives it to Derek White, who hits an open three. Jalen Brown has become such a better player this year. From his leadership, which has really sparked up in these playoffs, like I talked about earlier, to his decision-making, of course, He's a little shaky still with his dribbling. I'm not going to deny that. But his decision-making, his awareness, his defense, and his overall just game has gotten drastically better from years past. This man started off as the seventh or eighth man when he was a rookie, and he was the third overall pick on a mediocre team that just happened to overperform with IT, Jay Crowder, Avery Bradley. Those were some fun days at Celtics as a Celtics fan. But year after year, Jalen Brown has gotten better to the point, he's conference finals MVP and looking to win a championship. So shout out Jalen Brown and shout out the Boston Celtics because they've made this road look easy. People are probably going to disagree with me, but you heard my whole spiel earlier. Last year's team would not have made it look this easy. So now they're in the NBA finals. They have nine or 10 days off. The Mavericks tonight look to sweep the Timberwolves look to get eight or nine days off for themselves. And June 6th is the NBA Finals. So I'll be making a preview video on that, other videos as well, talking about other teams who have been bounced out of the playoffs because we got a lot of time to fill here before the finals start. But anyways, hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. I'll be back very, very soon. And like always, Boston Celtics are in the finals. But yes, like always, peace out.